We must move on to questions to the Assembly Commission. I call Mr. Chris Little. Question number one. On behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. Initially, a budget of £100,000 was allocated to develop a youth assembly in 2014-15. However, because of financial constraints, the project was put on hold and consideration given to other ways of engaging with young people. The Education Service continues to work with schools and with the youth sector to increase young people's understanding of the work of this assembly and to encourage their engagement with that work. Significantly, the Education Service has been working with Assembly Committees to consult young people about a range of different legislation and inquiries, for example, shared and integrated education, together building a united community strategy, the road traffic bills and current proposals for a new law on bullying in schools. The Education Service is further engaging young people in the work of the Assembly through its Connections Project, which aims to promote dialogue between decision makers and young people, financed by the European funding streams, uh, Eremus plus the project running between February 2015 and January 2016, involves 36 participants aged between 16 and 18. The group will have the opportunity to deliver primary research findings to assembly committees in early 2016. Plans are underway to apply for further funding for similar projects involving other legis legislatures. The Education Service uh, series of Let's Talk events around Northern Ireland brings together young people and their MLAs. In 2014-15, five such events were held, each of which involved about 100 young people from differing schools and neighbouring uh, constituencies. Mr Little for a supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for her update, and I, I welcome uh, the much positive work that has been doing to ensure uh, youth participation and inclusion in the assembly process, particularly the inaugural Youth Congress that is scheduled to take place in this assembly chamber tomorrow. But would the member accept that uh, the priority for children and young people remains at uh, Northern Ireland Youth Assembly? And would uh, the Commission be willing to re-engage with the youth sector, the Northern Ireland Youth Forum, for example, to re-examine and refresh costings and proposals in relation to uh, Northern Ireland Youth Assembly? I the member for his supplementary. Um, yes, I wholeheartedly agree, and as do the Commission, that we need to be engaging our young people as much as possible uh, with this Assembly and how we uh, operate within the Assembly. And I'm glad you mentioned the inaugural Northern Ireland Youth Congress annual sitting tomorrow. I, like other members around this chamber, will be present at that tomorrow, and we should be doing everything within our power to keep that engagement with our young people. Call Mr. Gordon Lyons. Question two, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Call Ms. Katrina Rian to answer on behalf of the Assembly Commission. And can I thank the member for his question? O Anor Govila Hainje, could you yet afford Govila Kuig Jake, Hug Trike Dahatashe, Kate Quagashe, Dini, Courtier Ferguson of the Parliament? From January 2011 to October 2015, the total number of people on record of having visited Parliament buildings is 346,156. This number represents the total number of visitors attending a diverse range of events, functions, guided tours and schools education programmes. The Assembly does not, however, keep a record of the number of public visitors attending plenary sessions, committee meetings or using the public dining facilities during recesses. The Assembly Commission will be able to provide the member um, in writing the yearly total number of visitors broken down into functions, functions with the tour, tours with hospitality and education programmes. Indeed, we can, we, if members here are interested, we can provide it to all the members. Reliance for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I, can I thank the Commission member uh, for her uh, answer? And perhaps she would also be able to give me the information broken down by each year uh, as well, the total for uh, each year. I'm sure that other members um, in the Chamber will want to uh, join with me in commending especially the work of the Education Service and the work that they do uh, with young people. Um, most weeks since I've um, come to this place, I seem to be in uh, answering questions uh, from young people, and it's very welcome to have that opportunity to do that. Um, will the uh, Commission join uh, with me in commending the work of the Education Service and, and also seeing what other ways we can engage uh, with young people who, who come here? Thank you. 
um, I absolutely agree with you in relation to the work of the education service and I can actually give you a breakdown of visitor numbers now in relation to visitor numbers and also education groups. In 2011 there was 71,556 visitors, 2012 81,710, 2013 73,645 and 2014 70,830 and 2015 which obviously isn't completed yet 48,415 um, people. In terms of education programs um, in 2011 we had 576 groups and that was 18,185 visitors um, and in 2012 587, in 2013 520, 2014 476 and 2015 393 groups. So you can see the significant number of groups um, and, but I absolutely share with you, I think the work that the education um, services do is, is second to none and what it does is provide young people from a very early age in schools right across the north an opportunity to engage with politicians from all different political parties and I think that is invaluable. Call Mr. Sean Lynch. Thank you Deputy Speaker or Principal De Deputy Speaker. Given the recent visit to an event organised for the Israeli government and students and press from various parties here Will a similar event be now organised by the Commission for the Palestinian Government, given the outreach to uh, people who are unrepresented? Well, I thank the member for his question. And um, yes, recently we did, there was an event organised uh, with 60 students from Belfast Metropolitan College and Ulster University. They were studying communications, journalism and politics and representatives from the Israeli embassy in London were present, as were representatives of local political parties and local media organizations. Um, I'm pleased to say, via the Jaguar Lesson Mission Palestina in London, Lesson Dara came the Nimak Shawraktal Savarmaj Khayana. And I am pleased to say that contact has been made with the Palestinian government mission in London to arrange the second leg of this event in the same format. Mr. Adrian Cochrane Watts. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, given the, the high volume of visitors to Parliament buildings, I'm wondering can the Commission outline what, uh, what advances were made in the car parking situation in the past 12 months, or what is proposed to ease that situation, particularly on a Monday and a Tuesday, when many people are parking down the mile in all forms of weather? Well, um, we have made some extra spaces here at the building and I will, forward, I will ask uh, officials to forward the member full details in relation to the number of car parking and the extra spaces that uh, there are here but also in some of the outlying car parks. Well, Mr Sean Rogers. And I think everybody will agree around the House with the invaluable work of the Education Service now. But could I ask the member, in terms of budget cuts, how has that affected the education service and how particularly is it affecting the assembly outreach service? Well, uh, I thank the member for his question and um, there is a new outreach and engagement strategy which we have just brought forward, which I actually chaired. Um, we're doing everything we can to increase the number of visitors um, and also increase the number of schools that are coming here and all the members did uh, from every single political party did everything in their power to actually protect the outreach uh, and education budget and we'll continue to try and do that. Call Mr Nelson McCausland. Um, question uh, number three, please. Ms Paula Bradley to answer this question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, Mr. Principal, or Principal Speaker, or Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the member for his question. Um, within the official tour script provided by the Northern Ireland Assembly Tour Guides, reference is made to a range of architectural features, including the statue and tomb of Lord Craig Avon. Currently, no reference is made during regular, public or private guided tours to the memorials of former members murdered by paramilitary organisations. However, during public and private tours, visitors are encouraged by guides to ask questions I may on occasion ask about the, war memor or the wall memorials in the Senate and Assembly Chamber uh, rotundas. Mr McCausland, first supplement. Um, thank you, um, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. I wonder, uh, in the circumstances of Northern Ireland, where lives were taken in the course of the democratic process, 
and people were murdered by illegal paramilitary organizations. It is part of the story of this place, part of our history. Would it not be possible to include in the tour a reference to those who died in that way? Bradley. Thank you, and I thank the member for his supplementary. Um, the official tour script uh, provided by the Northern Ireland Assembly Tour Guides was approved by the Assembly Commission back in 2001. And I, could I suggest maybe to the member that he speaks to his commission member um, about yes. other issues he might have? Thank you. Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And uh, I'm disappointed to hear that memorials are not explained unless someone actually asked. But as we move into a pivotal year for centenaries next year, not least Northern Ireland's sacrifice at the Battle of the Somme, will the Commission now seek to integrate the war memorial inside the main doors as part of the tour in future? Bradley. I thank the member for his question. Um, uh, again, you need to speak to your Assembly Commission com uh, member. That will be something that will have to be dealt by the Commission and a decision made by the Commission. But I uh, understand his sentiments entirely. So I do. And uh, uh, yes, I could say I probably would be supporting that. Call Mr. George Robinson. Question four, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Answer this question on behalf of the thank Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I would thank Mr. Robinson for his question. Uh, there are currently five defibrillators in Parliament buildings, and they are located in the following areas the front reception, the control room, the blue flax, the long gallery, and the fourth floor south corridor. Information on the location of defibrillators is provided on ANSYST. Answer. Mr. Robinson, um, first supplementary. Thank, thanks for the answer, Deputy Speaker. Can you outline the number of people trained to use defib defibrillators and how often their skills are updated? The Assembly Commission is committed to ensuring that there is a positive health and safety culture throughout the organisation, and as such, there are 18 staff trained in use of defibrillators. Ms. Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I commend the member on his comprehensive answer so far? Given the importance, can I ask, um, are there any plans to train additional staff in the use of defibrillators? <coughs> Thank Mrs. Dobson for her question. There are currently no plans uh, to train any additional secretarial staff in the use of defibrillators, as the number of fully trained operatives is considered sufficient for the number of defibrillators in the building. Ms. Karen McKevin. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the member for his answer thus far? Given the importance uh, uh, and the statistics around it, that the use of defibs is, wouldn't have the Commission any plans to introduce training to uh, members of this Assembly for the use, as nobody knows uh, the day and the hour that maybe uh, one of us could use that life saving skill? Thank the member for her question. To date, there has, been no, uh, there has not been a request to use defibrillators in Parliament buildings. They are, however, tested on a weekly basis to ensure that they are fully operational. Call Mr. Jim Allister. I call on Mrs. Judith Cochrane to answer on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. Um, the Assembly Commission had no role in or knowledge of the format of the Act of Remembrance held in the Great Hall on the 11th of November. As in other parliamentary institutions, the Speaker, in his representational role, determines the arrangements for keynote events when the Speaker, which the Speaker hosts on behalf of the Assembly. As was the case under previous speakers, the Assembly Commission does not be involved in these um, events, either the, these ones on behalf or those that the Speaker organises just simply through his office. I am aware that the Speaker issued a very considered letter to all members, and I would refer the member to that. Mr Allister, first supplement. If the Speaker cannot be trusted to retain the National Anthem as an integral part of the Remembrance Service, as evidenced by his disgraceful but happily failed attempt to obliterate the national anthem on the 11th of November, is it not time that the Assembly Commission may be considered taking over this event or exercising the necessary control to ensure that such 
uh, attempts to obliterate the national anthem will not occur again? I thank the member for his um, supplementary. Um, it would not be appropriate for the Commission to seek uh, to take on an event um, which has previously been organised um, by the Speaker without the Speaker's request um, that they do so. And the member may be or may or may not be aware um, that the Royal British Legion themselves have not said that the national anthem needs to be an integral um, part of um, such an event. I understand, though, that the current Speaker did engage with the Royal British Legion. And as a result, he ensured that the Armistice Day event was actually held on the 11th of November and that it was in the Great Hall in order to allow uh, for more people uh, to be able to attend than in previous years. Um, I think it will be for the next Speaker um, in the next Assembly to take the arrangements forward. Um, but members should take up the offer of the current Speaker um, to engage in this issue um, to ensure that future events um, are as open and inclusive as possible. Mr. Sandra, over. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, does the commission, uh, Commissioner appreciate that the, the Speaker's decision to remove the national anthem had ultimately the opposite effect of supposedly his effort of making it a delegate? Um, I thank the member um, for her question. Um, I, I think it's true the Commission's focus through its engagement strategy um, is to encourage people um, into this building and to uh, participate in events. And there are no uh, definitive records, but we believe that the Remembrance event um, that was held this year actually had a record attendance. And the Commission would very much welcome that um, outcome and the inclusive approach that the Speaker has outlined. Well, Mr. John. Deputy Speaker, uh, as a mere Deputy Speaker in this august body, would Mrs Cochrane agree with me that it's always rewarding when you manage to get all political parties involved and leaves an event open so that all members of staff uh, can attend it? Yes, I would agree with the Deputy Speaker. Well, Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, thank the member for answers. Can the member explain as to why the, act, the service was changed from that of a service to an act of remembrance, contrary to what happens across the rest of the United Kingdom? Um, I thank the member for his question. Um, as I said, the Commission was not involved in the arrangements, so all I can go by is the Speaker's letter, which made it very clear that he was not continuing uh, with the, the previous um, event or service, as you might refer to it, um, which actually had stemmed from when the civil service uh, were the main uh, occupants of this building. Um, the Speaker indicated that he was instead building on the format of the event um, that he had led in the Great Hall in uh, 2014, uh, when he was Principal Deputy Speaker, um, and like that, that event, um, this year's event um, had no music. Well, Mrs. Pam Cameron. Question number six. I call Mrs. Paula Bradley to answer this question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, and can I thank the member for her question? A draft Gender Action Plan for the Secretariat staff has been developed by the Gender Action Plan Working Group a group compromising senior staff from across the Assembly. The draft action plan sends out a range of actions and measures to promote gender equality within the Assembly Secretariat. It is a cross-directorate plan which covers the entire organisation for a two-year period from 2016 to 18. The action plan also supports the Assembly in complying with its Section 75 duties. The Assembly Commission considered the draft uh, plan at its meeting on 4 November 2015 and has approved it for staff consultation. The action plan was issued for consultation on 12 November 2015. The consultation will close on Friday 8 January 2016. A copy of the draft action plan has been sent to the Equality Commissioner for comment. The draft action plan is available on the Assembly intranet. Well, Mrs Cameron for a supplementary. Thank you. Thank the member for uh, the answer to the question there. I uh, can ask, is, uh, will the findings of the AERC's review into women in politics and the Northern Ireland Assembly link into the Secretariat Gender Action Plan? Ms Bradley. I thank the member for her supplementary. The Secretariat Gender Action Plan Working Group has considered the findings and research of the Assembly and Executive Review Committee's review of women in politics and the Northern Ireland Assembly to identify any overlapping issues, specifically where identified issues may affect Secretariat staff. 
the Gender Action Implementation Group will continue to follow progress on the AERC review, and the action plan contains a specific action to bring AERC recommendations to the Women in Politics Working Group and advise the Gender Action Implementation Group of any potential impact on Secretariat staff. Mr. Basil McRae is not in his place. I call Mr. David Hildage. Principal Deputy Speaker, question eight. I call Mrs. Judith Cochran to answer this question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Uh, thank you, and I thank the, uh, the member for um, his question. Um, at the meeting of uh, the 24th of June 2015, the Assembly Commission noted the commitment in the Stormont House Agreement to seek to extend the use of Northern Ireland civil service shared services across the wider public sector. Naturally, the uh, Assembly Commission is not part of the Northern Ireland Civil Service, nor was it a party to the Stormont House Agreement, but the Commission agreed that it would consider whether any of its present business activities could be better delivered through a shared services approach. Over the summer months, uh, a series of meetings have taken place with shared services providers in the civil service, most notably in the fields of IT, human resources and finance. And Assembly Secretariat officials will bring fully worked business cases on options for the future delivery of services to the Commission, either through the current in-house arrangements or through uh, an NICS shared services approach. The Commission has no plans at present for further outsourcing of services to the private sector. Mr Hildage for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank Mrs Cochrane for her detailed answer to date. Uh, could she further tell me then what is currently being outsourced? I thank the member for his supplementary question. Uh, the Commission uses private sector providers for the provision of catering and support services, broadcasting, some aspects of building maintenance and printing. The Commission also receives a wide range of services from the public sector, including policing, central procurement directorate services, waste management services, stationery and office supplies, welfare and occupational health services, and certain software supply services. I call Mr. Kiernan McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number nine. I call Mr. Sam Gardner to answer this question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. I thank the member for his question. At its, meet at its meeting on the 11th of November, the Assembly Commission agreed the policy for external lighting of Parliament buildings. In order to manage the lighting of the building on designated occasions, whilst for preserving the dignity of Parliament buildings. In line with the policy, the Commission scheduled up to four days during the calendar year for events of its choice. In 2015, the four days chosen by the Assembly Commission were Monday, the 9th of March, International Women's Day, the building would be coloured purple, Tuesday, the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, green. Sunday, the 12th of July, Orange. Wednesday, the 11th of November, Remembrance Day, Red. Again, in line with the policy, the Assembly Commission allows its charity uh, of up, to f up the years to five days during its 12 months term, as well as granting up to another eight days in other events during the calendar year. Mr McCarthy for a supplementary. I am very grateful to the member for his uh, response, but can he uh, outline the process by which the Assembly decides between the various applications and how it communicates decisions to groups of the decisions made thereby? In line with the policy, only events organised at Parliament buildings or within Storm at the State DFP approved will have access to a lighting system. Only charitable community or non-profit organisations based in or having a significant connection to Northern Ireland, celebrating a significant anniversary, the 1st, 5th, 10th, 25th, 50th, 50th, etc., on occasions may be permitted to have Parliament buildings illuminated in a special colour. Well, Mr William Humphrey. Much, Principal Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Commission member for his answer so far? In terms of communication of these dates and the lighting up of the building, members, other members may have been approached as I was about the building being lit up in the colours of the French tricolour after the appalling massacre in Paris recently. I think it's important that the, that the message gets out to the general public because there was no response, obviously, because the system currently doesn't allow for the building to be lit up in three colours. Will the new system be allowing that to happen? 
Well, that, that will be a matter for the Commission to take back and look at, and uh, hopefully it will meet with your requirements. Call Mr. Alex Maskin. <coughs> Asking member, can the member assure the House that all requests are considered equally, and that will include events such as Pride? The answer is very uh, quick and short. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I call Mr. Gordon Dunn. And please. I'll ask. And I'd like to thank the member for his question. Following the unauthorised flying of the Irish national flag, on the 3rd of June 2015, the PSNI concluded their investigation um, in or around 15th of September 2015. However, despite inquiries, no persons have been uh, made responsible. Dorch Freshen, Nakfedelo, and Tawarshaw Horchnis Fujaganam Shah, and the PSNI have indicated that they can take this matter no further at this time. Mr. Dunn, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and thank the member for her answer. Considering that the breach occurred in, I understand, May this year, would the, me the member consider that it is important that we get to find out how such a breach occurred and that measures are now put in place to stop recurrence? Because I'm sure she would agree it is important that we, we keep the proper flag here flying. Yeah. Well, I can certainly agree with the member that we keep the proper flags flying. Um, <laughs> and I certainly would like to see, uh, as, as a member of this commission and representing a significant number of MLAs, I certainly would like to see my national flag flying and the, the national flag that our party adhere to. Having said that, having said that what I think we should do as an assembly um, in the interest of moving forward is either have equality or neutrality. And the member will be aware there's currently issues around flags, there is not consensus in relation to this, and I think the best way forward is that we reflect everyone's traditions or nobody's traditions. Call Ms. Rosie McCorley. Thank the, the member for those answers. And does the Assembly Commission believe that the, that the citizens, that Irish citizens, should be treated with equality? And uh, you know, the, the member uh, has just said that. So uh, can she confirm that? And that in relation to flying of, of the Irish national flag, would this better reflect this assembly and society? Well, I, I thank the member. Gan wakes on question agus ainti am lehi. I am as I'm speaking as a member of the Assembly Commission. The Assembly Commission has failed to reach consensus in relation to flags. Um, I think what I would like to see as a member of the Commission is that all our traditions and nationalities are respected. Um, as an Irish Republican, I would like to see the, uh, my flag represented. Or we should have a neutral position. I think it's unfair. Um, to have one tradition uh, reflected and others not. So I hope in the future, there currently is an EQIA being carried out, uh, I hope uh, in the future that we will be able to ensure that all traditions are reflected, equality or neutrality. I call Mr Dathy Mackay. I call Mrs Patricia Ruan to answer the, this question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Um, the Cade a can previous can call you, but white lump cash in a hain jig, August three jig, a ragger to the With your permission, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I'd like to answer questions 11 and 13 together. Jagri Fimini on Sturior Olish, August Faroctana, on Timok Commersodi now in Polichul, and Genu Law, the Venus Sauna, Gavi La Cuig jig. Officials from the Information and Outreach Directorate organised the Communicating in a Political World event on 10th of November 2015. The event, as I said to an earlier answer, was attended by 60 students from Belfast Metropolitan College and Ulster University. The speakers at the event included the spokesperson of the Embassy of Israel in London and representatives of various political parties and representatives of local media organisations. 
Um, the member will be aware from my previous answer that contact has been made with the Palestinian mission in London to arrange the second leg of this event in the same format. Time is up. I ask the members to take their ease while we change the top table.